This is Michael Schaefer again, director of Warm Heart, and what we're looking at here is FU2. We're about to start our second test burn. I wanted to start by introducing you to the changes that we made since our last burn. The first thing you'll notice is that we removed the inner um, chimney. We felt that it didn't give us enough draw, blocked up the chimney aperture completely, so we have removed it, closed in the hole uh, almost completely, and left the quencher unit in, which I will talk about in a moment. Otherwise, we have removed the blocks from around the bottom. You will remember that in the first test burn, we had a tremendous amount of oxygen moving through. We had a lot of flame coming out here, kind of a burn convection cell going, which um, resulted in a lot of ash and reduced the amount of biochar we were making. Also resulted in an amount of oxygen that simply overcame the uh, the chimney. So on the chimney front, what we did is that rather than trying to pre-guess the actual chimney size, we've built a chimney which permits us to open and close it so we can try different size chimneys. And we've created an aperture arrangement on the uh, roof piece here, which allows us to make the aperture for the chimney larger and smaller. So today we're trying a medium-sized chimney, medium-sized aperture hole. If this is still overwhelmed by the requirements of venting flue gases, we can make this hole larger and make the chimney larger. If it seems to be too much, we can close it down and be able to see how it works with a uh, smaller arrangement. As you can see here on the sides, in order to avoid the problems of bulging. We've reinforced the side panels. And here, a small but important point, we've actually added these tiny stubs to the frames, which hold the two pieces of sheet together and clamp them in with the frame piece here. The result of which is that without having to add any extra pressure or clamping, our, our side sheet metal pieces are held in place. One final practical element is that we have created a square angle iron frame on the ground, which simply makes it much, much easier to um, assemble the entire thing. On the other side, We've made some modifications to our barn doors. The barn doors no longer have to set in tightly. They simply have blocks to hold them in place. And then we've just put these kinds of bars, the kind of barn door bars that you keep use to keep horses uh, in and out. Makes it very much faster and easier to put the, put the doors in. Later, when we finish the burn, I will show you the much modified quenching unit and I will show you the tray that we've put on the bottom to make it very easy to remove the biochar when we're done. We think that this unit should behave much better than the previous one, but we'll just have to see. This is all about experimentation, so let's light her up and see what happens. So this hasn't burnt at all. This has just sat in no oxygen and heated and heated and heated. Yeah, and, and it's just through. it's just pyrolyzed in place. Beautiful. So it's a little bit smaller than it was originally, right? As all the water and everything else has been removed. But now you're down to a carbon crystal structure that mimics the form of the plant itself. Really fantastic. It's great quality. Here we are, we're quenched, and uh, we've got the machine open, the kiln open, and uh, as you can see, we've really got a nice lot of biochar here. So, about two and a quarter hours, so a pretty quick burn, although not as fast as we would hope for. What you're able to see here is the reconceived quencher unit that uh, we've put together. Instead of just having the tall two-pipe arrangement that we had 
last time, we've got this much larger number of much shorter pipes, each one of which permits oxygen in during the burn, and then each one of which sprays water out during the quenching process. As you remember from the first burn, what we saw was a trench develop in the middle of the burn where there was way too much oxygen. The center section just burnt completely and left the sides to pyrolyze much more slowly. During this burn, what we saw was holes develop where each one of these pipes was, uh, suggesting again that we were getting lots of oxygen flow. We were getting a much more generalized oxygenization, but we were still getting a process of actual burning around the oxygen access points, and we were still getting a less than perfectly even burn. And as you can see here, this one patch of unpyrolyzed um, straw here is at a point right in between um, sources of oxygen. So it did not pyrolyze while the rest did. So I think we are going to once again modify this unit. Um, as you can see here, we have this piece of sheet metal. Uh, we had put underneath the quencher a set of sections of sheet metal that we hoped would allow us to pull the entire load of biochar as well as the quencher out into the open to make it extremely easy to um, collect all of the biochar. Unfortunately, um, after the heat, the, <laughs> the bolts seemed to have failed. They tore loose, so we were unable to do that. Um, however, we think that we can improve on the quencher system in a way which will make this unnecessary. In brief, what our partner Stuart has suggested and what I think we are going to try for our next arrangement is to create a flat pan-like arrangement for the floor of the kiln, which will be maybe two or three inches deep, be made with angle iron sides, a good tough top, which will have a series of lo a large number of small holes in it, and will be connected to the outside by a pipe. This will allow oxygen to enter and to rise evenly throughout the pile, allowing for uh, a greater degree of oxygenization without the effect of these highly focused burns. But at the same time, when we add water into this tray that's lying underneath, that steam will rise up through all of these holes and we will get a much more even quench as well. So as usual, we've learned a lot. We think we're very close to getting ahead here, um, but there's still obviously a lot to learn. Um, one other thing that we learned was that um, even the larger chimney is not quite large enough. So again, picking up so on some suggestions being made by uh, our partner Stuart, we are going to resize the chimney, add a secondary chimney outside of the primary chimney, and our next burn, when we get to it in a week or so, will include the tray solution to the quencher and oxygenization and a much larger chimney. But anyway, live and learn. We learned a lot. This machine performed substantially better than the first FU2, and we think that by the time we get to the third version, it should be working very well. So here in closing, thank you very much to uh, Dawson Weehunt, who's been our primary laborer and assistant and design and you know innovator uh, so far, but who will be off in Nepal by the time we do this. We'll send him the video. Thanks a lot, Dawson. Goodbye, everybody.